Hi everyone. Um, due to an overwhelming response to my Excel video uh, showing a couple of things, I decided to make another one for Outlook. Um, I figured this will help people in my company and it will help people out there. So I wrote up quick couple of things I'm going to quickly show you, or not so quickly as commented in my Excel video. And I do recommend you watch it by the way, it's really informative. Um, I got here 10 things about Outlooks and I would like to go one by one. So I'm going to be discussing Outlook 2010, uh, which is a part of the Microsoft Office suite, uh, the 2010 uh, suite. And let's begin. Um, so you got Outlook. So what is it? How does it work? What does it do? Um, I wasn't always an Outlook user. I used to use Thunderbird actually from Mozilla up until my employer pushed me to use Outlook and uh, I'm glad that I did. Um, I happen to learn it inside out. It's a really, really good program. So let me just quickly start. So let me fire it up real fast. So Outlook is an email client. Um, it usually works with pretty much all emails, uh, all POP3 emails or Exchange, more or less, uh, which we, for example, use in our office. But you can actually plug in any email. Uh, Hotmail natively works with this because it's a Microsoft uh, branded email. You can use uh, Gmail with this. You can use the Adopt.me account Apple gives you uh, if you have a Adopt.me account. Um, any email. So I happen to have my Elon at Danger Studio email in here. And if we go to File and we go to Account Settings, um, you could see, but I'm not, I don't want to open my settings because I don't want to show too many things, personal things, but you would see here that I can go and make a new account, for example, and I can put my name, my email address, the password, and Outlook is actually very smart now. It tries to automatically configure your service settings, or it can manually configure it. Um, most providers have instructions to how to set up Outlook. It's actually very easy how to set up an account inside here. So let's get back to the main point. So what is Outlook? This is a really, really big program. Um, you have your folders over here, such as inbox, drafts, sent items, deleted items, junk email, outbox, uh, RSS feeds. Um, and business contact manager, I'm not going to touch, even though I have it installed. It's a whole separate thing. So inbox is where you would initially get your email. Drafts is emails that you begin writing, but you haven't sent yet. Uh, sent items, that's just a list of sent items. Uh, you see here all um, items that I had sent before. I usually clean these things out, but you'll see my deleted items. Um, my junk email box, of course. Everyone gets junk mail. Outlook is very smart. You can actually um, flag something and it'll always go into junk. That way you never have uh, too many things. Um, your outbox, that's basically where everything that has not yet sent goes. When you hit the send button, it jumps to the outbox until it's sent. Then it disappears from the outbox and goes into sent items. You have your RSS feeds, something that I, I really actually like. You'll notice I don't have a lot of things here because this is not my... Um, th this is like a demonstrational version of what I'm doing. I don't really have all my things in here, but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, search folders. Uh, you can create a search folder <coughs> uh, that will basically categorize and dump everything in, such as unrailed mail or stuff made for follow-up. It's all about organizing, which I'm going to get into in a moment. So Outlook is used to create emails. You have a nice ribbon over here, very similar to Excel. Uh, and you can use Outlook to basically ha use it as a hub for every single email account you have. You can have multiple accounts on here. You can have as many as you can, as many as you want. Um, but I keep it simple. I usually have uh, up to three. Uh, I like it that way. Who needs a thousand addresses anyway? More or less. Well, got my cat here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, who needs a million accounts? You can actually just have stuff forwarding from one account to the other. So. Touching base, um, Outlook is exactly as I mentioned about four times so far, an email client. You use it to check your mail. It is a really nice program. It comes with uh, Microsoft Office. You see here I have Word open in the background. Look, it's the same look and feel, same style. Same thing Excel has. The ribbon is a really, really nice uh, navigational uh, thing to have. So let's jump into the second part. So let me cross this baby out and let's go to reading, writing, and forwarding the very key elements of Outlook. Reading, you'll receive an email. It will come in as an unread uh, email. When you right-click it, obviously, you have all these options. So I'm going to mark it unread. 
So you'll see here that I have a bolded email and that represents a brand new email. Now I can read it and I can mark it unread again for the future. Um, so I can right click it and mark it red. Um, you'll see here quickly that I have basically, this is very basic stuff. Some of you may say, hey, why are you even showing this? Well, some people don't even know how to use it properly. So um, when something is bolded, it is unread. When it is unbolded, it means you've touched base and you've read it. Uh, the reading panel shows you a quick view of the email. For example, you see me clicking around, you'll see that I have these quick views over here on the right. And when I double click an email, you'll see that it'll open up in a full view. And a full view contains a whole other ribbon uh, options than the main view because there's other things. There's many things you can do with this. You can translate this email to another language. You can translate particular text. You can create follow-ups. You can categorize it. You can mark it unread for the future when you want to read it again. Um, you know, I, use, I usually mark things unread when I want to remind myself to read them again, basically. Uh, you can send it to OneNote, which is another beautiful thing about Microsoft Office. You can move it to another folder. Um, you could do multiple things multiple things. So when reading email, it's very simple. You just click and you open. I mean, it's that simple. I never even open the email. I just read it in the panel. Unless I really want to look at it. It's a nice HTML email. I can full screen it uh, and read it. See, this is a very nice put email generated by a marketing uh, marketing list for Sugar CRM. They made it real nice, actually. I really like the outlook. It's very simple, easy on the eyes. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for the reading part. Well, let's go for the writing. In Outlook, in Home, on the very top on the left, the very first button is New Email. Now, obviously, they will put the new email there because they, the most two most things you'll be using Outlook for is reading and writing. So let's click the New Email uh, button, and you'll right away see what happens is Outlook will uh, pop up and open uh, a brand new Compose email message. And you have the to option, which you will write in who you want to send it to. In this case, I'll say I want to send it to myself. It automatically resolve the contact and get the full name in here. Really, really nice feature. Now you can carbon copy this email to someone. Say I want to also copy it to uh, my mobile account. So this ex same exact email will now go to my mobile account and to my primary account. Now if I click on the CC button, I can actually BCC it, which is another part of carbon copy, which is a blind carbon copy. What it means is that I can send it to, let's say, John Doe at DangerStudio.com. And what BCC means is that it's going to send a copy of the email blindly, secretly, so that when Mobile and Elon over here get this email, they won't know that a copy has been sent to John Doe as a forward. It's a really, really nice option when you want to kind of secretly send an email copy to someone, the same email, but you don't want to share with them, uh, share with the recipients that you shared the email with them. And this is done by clicking the CC button. You see, they didn't include it right here in Outlook. So um, here you're able to search your contacts, obviously. You see here I can search for my business contacts, my accounts. This is from Business Contact Manager, so I don't really want to get into this. Um, but this is essentially how it works. You can actually select all the contacts that you need to, to email to directly from your contact book. Now what you can also do is you can type in multiple email addresses. I can email it to a at dangerstudio.com uh, studio excuse my typing I can send it to b at dangerstudio.com and you know by using commas I can send it to pretty much as many email addresses as I want and share this email including who I'm CCing it to which is carbon copying and a blind carbon copy if I want to secretly include someone into this and I don't want my other recipients to know that I sent it to them so that's the to and carbon copy field again excuse me I have cat hair all over me my cat is just sitting on my lap and shedding everywhere um, the subject is, well, given you already know what this is, you put in the subject of the email, obviously. And then there is the body. And the body is where the magic happens, because here you have text formatting. You can write something like test, test, test. You can bold. You can underline. You can italicize. And you can even change colors. And you can actually highlight. So if you want to make something stand out, for example, you can highlight it in a sentence, or you can bold it and get it to get attention. I mean, styling is a really important thing in Outlook. You can format emails. Uh, people like to color their fonts. I like the old-fashioned black on white. 
uh, and I only bold things when they're very important in emails, but you get the idea. Um, you have your font options over here. You can select the font, font size. You can either raise fonts up and down. And again, I'm just going to write the word test in here and take a look with the whole font sizing thing. I can just raise this font up. You'll see me scrolling through fonts and you'll see it changing live as I select a font. And again, this is all styling. I'm not going to obviously go sit here through every font, but you get the idea. Um, I can also create bullets, I can create lists, I can create all kinds of neat little things that Outlook has provided me. It's a very rich graphical program, uh, actually. It's, it's very good. Um, I can align my text to the center, to the right, to the left. Very, very nice. I can even indent it. How about that? If I want to be very, very professional and ain't over talking about what I'm doing, I can totally format this and make it a really professional looking email. Um, another important thing is the attach button. Uh, a lot of times you'll want to email files to people, either co-workers, friends, um, you know, whatever the case may be. So you can actually click on the attach file button and you can click go to your desktop, for example, and say I want to attach this scanned document. And now you'll see I have an attached file. I can attach multiple files. I can just highlight multiple files and insert them in and notice they'll get in here. And I have a double file here and I can just click it, click delete, and it's gone. Um, very, very nice way to send files. I'm sure a lot of people know this already. Now, signature is another part of the email body. I have an automatic signature in here. When you go to signature and click on signatures, you'll see here that you can create as many signatures as you want, um, and you can design it in here. I can use the same styling I just showed you and create a really funky signature, but I just decided, again, go the old-fashioned way. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much it. Now, attach item is if I want to include a business card, if I want to include a contact from Outlook, or if I want to include one of my calendar appointments, um, attach item is attaching things that come from Outlook, where attach file is attaching a file from your computer. It's two different types of attaching. Sometimes you may want to share a contact with somebody from your book. Uh, you may want to share a calendar appointment. And here you can tag this. I can tag to follow up with this email, remind myself that later on today maybe I want to call the person I'm emailing uh, or tomorrow or so and I can add a reminder pop-up which will also note it in my calendar that I'm gonna touch base on later uh, and zoom is obviously just to zoom in on the email which I don't need to do uh, and that's it that's it's that easy it's that simple and the same features that work in Word work in here they actually embedded Word into the email body so let me close this out right now and this is the very basic so you just basically learned uh, or you already knew but you brushed up on uh, reading writing and forwarding so let me cross that out and let's go to the next thing rules this is something a lot of people don't use um, you can create custom rules in Outlook that will do certain things for you um, that you don't have to manually do all the time like let's say you always receive emails from a certain person right now you can right click the email and you can go down here to rules and this is a very very fun thing to do you can create a new rule over here um, and you could say that every email that I get from this contact right I wanna do the following so there's two steps to creating a rule right the first step is when I when I get the particular item and then do the following which is the action so I can make it play certain sounds for different emails so let's say this fanbridge guy that just sent me this weird spam email let's say every email that comes from him I want a certain sound to play um, and I can select multiple sounds here Outlook actually has a really large um, well it comes actually with Windows it's a Windows media um, files but I can make all kinds of sounds play uh, whenever this person sends me an email right so I can have multiple emails from multiple sounds from multiple emails I can also display the email in a new uh, item I can display I can display the email to come up in a new alert like pop up on my screen to like bring it out um, I can also make make the rule to automatically move the email into a custom folder. Let's say I want to create a special folder here uh, called fan, FanBridge, right? And every email he sends to me, I want to go to that folder, uh, which is organizing, which is another thing I wanted to talk about. But yeah, rules do do that. So when you create a rule, you're basically saying, hey, anything that I get from a particular person or any subject that contains something, um, or any email that is sent to either me or multiple people, right? So I only have one account here, so it's me only, but I can make it make the subject called uh, spam, right? And any email I get with the word spam in it, 
I can make the following actions happen, which is display an alert window, play a sound, or move it to a folder. I can create a new folder right now directly from this window, actually. I can just click on New, um, give it a folder, and give it a, a, a type, you know, a criteria, what goes in this folder. And in this case, I want mail items to go in this folder, right? So I can create, uh, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to screw up my layout, but I'm explaining to you guys how this pretty much works. I can create a rule that all his emails will go to junk. I can make all his emails go to my uh, inbox, but custom to the ability to, to customize Outlook is, is the beauty of it. You have so much power uh, on where things go and how they go, so you don't have to endlessly look for things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, you, and you can always, always, always do these things. And when I go to advanced options, and I'll, let me show you how I did this again. And, and this is the basic rule window, right? When I click on advanced options over here, you'll see that there are so many conditions so many different things um, that I can I can make happen with these rules I can create all and there's multiple conditions I can make multiple things I can have emails coming from fanbridge um, to be automatically flagged or I can I can specify certain keywords or categories for it to be I mean it's really endless if I was to sit here and talk about every rule and every rule type and what it does I would be spending a whole video just on this so uh, I'm just explaining to you guys that you can pretty much create from RSS to specific text on the title. This is so intricate because it even goes forward to RSS feeds. I mean, it's that it's that deep what you can do with rules. But for the most part, users won't be using this because most people, the average person, will use this. Just a basic view. The advance is really too much. They're really like action packed it for people who really know Outlook. And it's very good to, to look at and learn. So it's right here in advanced options. So how did I get to this window? Well what I did was is I picked the email and address here. Take uh, Brian Martin for example. I right click him, I go to rules, and I, I do create new rule. Now when I create this rule, um, I'm able to pretty much do all the things that I said that are capable and possible for me to do with. So I'm capable of doing all these many wonderful things, like moving him, creating alerts for him, playing special sounds for him. Very, very cool stuff, and I could do even more just by going to the advanced options and selecting certain things. Um, like, you know, rules that are marked as important. So I click on next, right? And do a microphone importance I'll do it from Brian Martin I'll make it an easy thing so when I select it from Brian right I can automatically print it you can automatically set Outlook to print your emails as they come in permanently delete them um, move them flag them clear the categories from them you can actually run a custom JavaScript even um, I mean, it's a, it's called a workflow what this is really it's a workflow you automate like five different actions uh, when an email comes in that you would normally do like move it organize it you can do everything using rules so here you select the condition here you select the action uh, the, again this is I'm going back to advanced because this is really what I use but I really wanted to focus on the basic because like I said most people do only need to use the basic uh, and and that's it for rules um, you know, rules also work like quick steps, you see here. Uh, quick steps in Outlook is also very, very similar things to rules, except they're manual. I can click on this, click on move to, and pick a folder where I want to move it to, right? So why do this to every email that comes in when I can just create a rule? I can create a simple rule. And you also have a shortcut for rules right here on the corner. It's that important. Um, for Outlook, which is why I'm talking about it, that I actually added a button for it right here on the ribbon because people will always, always, always use rules to organize their inboxes. It's very important. It's very neat. Um, and that's it for rules. So let me just X this out and go to number four, which is categorizing and organizing. So organizing is pretty much what I said with rules you can have specific folders for every person so I can have a folder for John Jane and Derek right and every time I get an email from John Jane or Derek it'll be categorized in that folder I don't have to go through all these messages I can just simply go to John and see every email he ever sent me uh, and all the correspondence from me so this is where organizing comes in. I should have really included it with the rules, but I just added it in here. So let's quickly go to categorizing. So you have another button up here called categorize. 
Um, and categorizing ties in with views because you can view by category. So what is categorizing? You can pick certain emails, like I'm going to pick this email, which is a, a gentleman over here in World of Warcraft uh, invited me to play. And let's say I want to mark it uh, in a red category. And I can actually name the category something special. These categories over here, they're fully customizable. You can add many more colors over here. You can select from this color palette. Uh, and you can rename them, give them names, like one, two, three, red, unread, important, not important. You know, it really depends on, on how you want to personalize it. So Zalos over here sent me this email, and I'm going to mark it red. Um, and I'm going to leave it red category for the sake of the example. So look what happened. Outlook put this little category box over here and made it in red. So now I can see that I have a red item. Very, very, very good thing because now I can always sort when I sort through this if I'm not organizing with rules I'm able to see that I have a red category item you see it says here red category I can multiple categorize it I can add it to a blue category also so now it's it's a uh, red and blue so now I'm able to go to views and I can sort this by category you see here red category has one item blue category has one item this is all all very important for organizing um, if you're able to categorize you're able to see none of these are in categories and I can click this little arrow and take a look I have here two things in two different categories now I'm gonna remove the blue category from here and you'll see well the red category and you'll see I'm on, only have blue category now and that the item is now only in the blue category sort section um, again making this very very easy to look for or perhaps I wanna use Outlook to you can actually use this to totally um, work your business or your home business or pretty much what you're doing. It's it, it's so powerful with organizing uh, that you can label and categorize clients or prospects and leads and and this is without even using Business Contact Manager, which is another crazy add-on that they developed for this. So I'm going to uncategorize this also because I really don't need to and everything moved to a non-category. I'm going to change my view back to date and that's everything for categories very easy very simple uh, one two three so let me close here categorizing um, let's exit out go to the next thing which is appointments and calendars uh, very very nice thing you can do with Outlook you'll notice here that there is a button here called calendar your every single Outlook comes with an instance of calendar you'll see mail calendar and contacts again business contact manager I'm not going to touch on uh, but I'm going to focus on these three things and let's go to calendar and you'll see here that every email has a calendar. When you have five accounts, you'll have five calendars. Each email has its own type of calendar. And the calendar ribbon is another wonderful thing. There's so many things in here that you can do. It is unbelievable. But I'm going to focus on the very bare minimum. Um, let me go back to my mail tab. Let's go back to Zalos who sent me this email. Uh, and I'm going to right click it and I am going to go and create either an appointment for this item or I'm going to do something where I can have a uh, item in my calendar for him. So I'm going to add a follow-up to Zalos. Let's say I want to follow up with this email. I'm interested in what he had to say and I'm deciding, I'm deciding I don't want to I don't want to deal with it now. I want to follow up with it sometime later. So what do I do? Uh, I'm going to right click the email. I'm going to go to follow up and I'm going to click on, let's say, tomorrow. I want to follow up with him tomorrow. Uh, in my calendar, I should have an entry right here, uh, which is here, show tasks on due date. You'll see I have an entry here to follow up with Zalos tomorrow, which is Friday the 25th. So let me go back to my mail, and this time I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to also add a reminder. Uh, I'm going to add a reminder for May 25th, which is when my appointment is. And I'm going to say, remind me to follow up with him at 10 a.m. I'm going to click OK. And when I go back to my calendar, I should be able to see that tomorrow at 10 a.m. I have an appointment to follow up with Zalos. Um, and you'll see it's actually over here. It still comes up as a task, but it has a little reminder icon. Now, one thing I don't like is the fact that I'm not seeing uh, the daily view. So I can change the view of my calendar. Let's change it to weekly. And here's Friday, and I still am unable to see it. Why am I not able to see it? 
See, I don't like seeing it on the bottom over here. It gets really crowded when you have hundreds of things. Sometimes I just want to have something very nice, basic, and easy. So let me open up this email. And let me click on meeting. Now, I believe when I click on meeting, right. So this is something that I get to send to him. If he has Outlook, he can, con can accept my invitation and confirm it. And it'll it'll show like, hey, he just confirmed the meeting with me. And it would remind me of that meeting and put it in Outlook. Again, this is a whole other subject, uh, an invitation. So meeting invitations is not really what I'm looking for to show you guys. Uh, let me close this. Really what I wanted to do is I wanted to create um, an appointment or a follow-up and have it show on my calendar. So I was able to do that by clicking the follow-up button and adding a reminder. I'm going to clear the flag on this because I really don't want to follow up with this, but uh, I wanted you guys to see. So by clearing the flag, I lost the meeting. It no longer appears on, on Fridays. But when I go to back to my mail and I right-click the email, um, under the menu, which appears when you right-click any email, the follow-up key is really what ties it into the calendar. So I'm able to, to immediately set a custom follow-up date uh, today, tomorrow, this week. So this is very, very specific. I can create a custom date in here. I could say I want to follow up with him next week, which is the 31st. I can click make sure I add a reminder, 4 p.m. I click OK. And when I go back to calendar, you'll see that when I travel to, let's say, a monthly view, now on the 31st, I do have an appointment with him. However, for some odd reason, ah, it isn't showing on my calendar. Oh, it is showing on my calendar. On the 31st, I have a task. So it comes up as a task. Let me delete it because I really, like I said, don't want to follow up with him. But when I go to my monthly view, let me click on home, click on my monthly view, and I'm going to pick a day, I can create an appointment. So appointments will really show in here more than follow up. See, I made a little error. I got him confused. But how do we create an appointment through email? That's the question. I, that's what I can't seem to find through this little right click menu, which I really wanted to show you guys. Um, the only things that I'm able to do by right clicking it is I'm able to create a follow up. But what I really want to do is I want to create an appointment because an appointment will really show up on my calendar. Um, for some odd reason, follow ups really do that for me, and I can't really get it outside of follow ups. Which is pretty strange too, because I was able to do this. Well, business contact manager, I can do it, but I wanted to really show you guys how to do it with Outlook. So I, I would use follow-ups to do it. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Really, you would create. If, if we find a way to create an appointment from here, we can actually have a little box on the day. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the simple flag. So flagging really creates these reminders and follow-ups, and they would all show up in here as well. So when I flag this you'll see that I can have them as many as I want um, flagged showing up in my little extra view bar um, which will also teach me how to properly um, well I wouldn't say teach me but would properly organize my things in here so when I start Outlook up the next day I'll already know what I have to work on right because I have everything flagged um, and I can actually sort this and organize it also it's a part of the whole organizing uh, feature so by clicking it again I marked it complete and by clicking it again I basically mark it done. I want to get these little checks out of here and because I don't want to mark anything complete. I want to clear the entire flag. And that's it. So that goes as much as it goes for um, flagging things and making them appear on my side calendar, for example. So let me go back to Word, kill this one, and let's jump into contacts, which is number six. Um, in Outlook, again, you have your mail, your calendar, and your contacts. So I'm going to go to contacts. And in contacts, again, ignore business contact manager. I'm not going to follow on that. But in contacts, I can have a quick list of everything I need. All the people I talk to, I can create a contact directly from the email. Um, or I can create a contact directly from contacts. Uh, so that this is this is a very, very cool thing that you can do um, organizing here. So let me create you a quick contact directly from here. Where is Alice's email? Did I delete it by mistake? I don't believe I deleted it. Or maybe I did delete it. So let's go back to uh, to Fanbridge over here. <laughs> so I'm back in uh, Fanbridge. And I want to add him to contacts. So I'll be able to create a record out of him. Oh, nope, that's business contact manager again. I don't want to do that. I'm going to end up only confusing you guys. Um, 
but I want to create a contact out of him. And where is my contact button? I feel like I totally like screwed up my UI because I don't see it in here. I want to be able to add him and create a contact out of him. So in order for me to go and do that, uh, I can not go to actions. And there's no point in moving him because I don't want to do that. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to right click his name and I'm going to choose add to Outlook contacts and right away the contact window will appear and I'll be able to put in information such as a company, um, job title you can totally customize this by the way I made a separate video about this, how to add fields in here um, most businesses have custom fields already but a lot of people just utilize these fields, they put different information in here and when you save and close this so this Fanbridge person is now in my contacts as Fanbridge and you can change the view as a short card, phone number only, show it as a list uh, or business card which is the most common view and it's totally sortable you can export this list as a CSV which you can use for many different things move it from database to database um, and it's very good to have your contacts in here because you always want to be able to uh, uh, share contacts with other people and you always want to be able to not forget people's emails it's something that happens to me frequently actually um, but by keeping everything together uh, in your contact book you have a really nice database of the people you speak with and you can have as much information as you want so by having Fanbridge as a contact here I can directly send him an email so when I go to mail and I click on new item I can just write Fanbridge and it'll automatically know who this person is Fanbridge and it'll open up this is his whole contact window over here uh, and it collects history about every single item that you sent him which is really cool So that's really the bare basic of contacts like I said there are so many features to this it is unbelievable it's so easy to get lost and confused but just remember you can open up um, an uh, uh, email from somebody right click uh, the from email and click on add to outlook contacts and fill in some information and click save and close and now you have a contact so let me delete these because these are not real contacts and let me move on to the next thing I know I'm burning a lot of time here um, RSS feeds. I don't know how many people use RSS feeds, but I, I happen to enjoy uh, reading them very much. Uh, Outlook has a special place just for RSS feeds. By right-clicking the RSS feeds folder and clicking on Add New RSS Feed, you just type in the address for the feed. Uh, here's a new site that I read, for example, um, and this is what the RSS feed really looks like. So. RSS feeds are just basically repositories for like a streamline of items mainly blogs have them um, you know a lot of news news places have them Google Reader if you use that then you definitely know what RSS feeds are uh, so RSS feeds basically yank out portions of articles and they allow you to view full articles um, so it's very very good if you're if you like reading things or keeping in touch with things some companies have RSS feeds so I just decided to include that in there it's a very very nice feature and I figure you know why why have an, another uh, third-party application for RSS feeds when you basically can use um, the built-in and Outlook feature for RSS feeds it's very 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 cool uh, and I, I think everyone should be using it in my opinion it's very nice so let me just move on ahead again I just wanted to touch base on it I believe I've already really showed you the other stuff because I really talked a lot about the other items uh, views views um, when you click every single ribbon has the view tab and you could choose what you want to see um, this is our navigation navigational pane this is our to-do bar and this is uh, our people pane I believe it's somewhere over here hold on right now it's minimized I can set it to normal except I set this off uh, hold on I'm not even looking at it there we go. You see how, how I'm, I'm, I'm switching my views? Take a look. You'll see a lot of things changing as I play with this. I can minimize my reading pane. I can turn this off completely so it's not there. Um, I don't really see a reason why doing it unless you really need to like widescreen something. But you know, in the event that you wonder where these bars go if you lose them by mistake, well, view is the way to do it. And what views also does is allows you to change the view on your inbox. You can view things by subject, by size. Uh, by flag which we went over flagging um, you can change the view to view by categories who it's from for example check it out uh, this person sugarcut sent me all these emails and it's sorted ascend by ascending date and I'm able to see that 
because uh, because I was able to view the from or the date, which is really the best one. Everyone really does it by date because you want to see what you got the other day, last week, two weeks ago, you know, archiving. Um, and that works also with custom folders, which you would be creating through rules. Um, so that that's pretty much it for the views. Very, very simple thing I wanted to touch base on. Uh, and let me can it. And I, I'm not even going to get to customizations. If you look through my YouTube channel, I created a video called How to Customize Outlook. And it shows you how to customize forms. Basically, you have to enable the developer portion. Uh, if you go to File and you go to Options um, and you go to Customize Ribbon, you would have to add, <laughs> you would have to add um, the developer. Uh, oh, it's right here. See, it says Developer right here. You would check it. You would click OK. And it adds a new tab in here called Developer, which allows you to design a form. You can design your own forms and replace existing Outlook forms with them with custom fields. So that is a whole other video all on its own. Um, I do recommend you look at it and let me cut it. And number 10 was just me saying closing, uh, reminding me to get off. So look, I underline instead of strike through. <laughs> um, so in closing, I hope you picked up some new things uh, in Outlook that I was able to help you brush upon. Um, Outlook is a, is a very, very, very beautiful and power to power power tool for emails. It is it is a powerhouse for emailing. Um, not a single person I know in the world right now is not using it because it comes with Microsoft Office. It is very, very powerful and very smart um, application and you could do many, many, many beautiful and lovely things with it and I, I highly, highly recommend um, people to start using it. Uh, I have videos out there about what Business Contact Manager is. I have videos out there about customizing Outlook. Um, and other videos about you know other Microsoft products such as Excel which I recommend you watch if you have the time um, I hope that I was able to like I said provide you guys some guidelines and that you enjoy my video I usually get really good feedbacks from people and I like sharing knowledge with people um, and do let me know your thoughts and comment below and feel free to share with your friends thank you for watching and have a good day or a good night